What is going on you guys? It is Eric from the Anabolic Aliens. Today I'm here to bring you the top five dumbbell exercises for a thicker back. And as always, let's jump right into the good content. Exercise number one is going to be the traditional dumbbell one-arm row. Now when I say traditional, most of us are taught to do the one-arm row as if we were starting a lawnmower, but obviously in modern day society, this might not be the way you start a lawnmower, but basically we're yanking the weight on the way up, and that's not what we want to do here. So if you notice in the row, my torso is facing down, so your chest is basically going to be pinned to the bench, so we're not moving our torso. We're going to be taking the elbow and pulling it back to our hip. Think about putting the dumbbell into your pocket with this exercise. So what we're doing by doing that is we're preventing more activation of the traps, focusing on the lats, the rhomboids, and the rear delts. And not only the exercise is going to fry those muscles, but also the biceps and the forearms. So you notice your grip will get a little bit weak. So two ways you can avoid that problem is by adding chalk to your hands to limit the moisture and get more grip on the bar or you can use straps, wrap it around the dumbbell, and pull it on the way up. We wanna make sure that everything remains stationary. We're pushing super hard through our foot, pushing hard through our hand to keep our core nice and stable as we row the weight up. Number two on the list is a dumbbell one arm power row. Now, if you go to a gym, this is the way that most people will be performing the exercise. And a lot of people knock this exercise calling it the incorrect way to do a dumbbell row, but it is essentially just a variation of the row involving more trap recruitment. So if you're looking to build your traps, your upper back, it is going to focus more on that specific area because we're actually going to elevate the traps during this movement because we are pulling the dumbbell to a higher point on our body. So instead of pulling it back towards our hip, we're pulling it up more towards our sternum. We're able to hold more weight during this exercise, and we wanna make sure that our whole entire body is still going to be stable. We wanna make sure our hand is pinned down, our foot is pinned down. We wanna make sure we're not driving too hard through our legs to the point where we're using momentum to pull the weight up, but rather engaging all the muscles we're supposed to be working. So again, that's the traps, the lats, the rhomboids, the rear delt, the biceps, and the forearm are gonna to be totally fried during these exercises, and especially the abs, because you are going to get winded while doing these. Exercise number three is the dumbbell one arm pronated row. Now everything remains the same as the previous two exercises, but our grip is going to be pronated. So that means our hand is going to be over the dumbbell, our elbow is gonna be out nice and wide. So what we're doing is we're basically simulating a wide grip dumbbell row. Now, during this exercise, we're going to have to pull a lot higher on our body. So we can't focus on pulling back towards the hip. We can't pull towards the sternum. It's actually going to be a little bit higher, more towards our chest. And what this is going to do is actually limit the lat activation during this exercise. Also limit some of the trap activation. Put a more focus on the rhomboids and the rear delts in this movement. So if you feel like those are lagging areas, this is one that you should add into your routine. Number four on the list is the dumbbell incline lever row. Now, during exercise number one, when we focused on pulling the elbows back and pulling the dumbbell into our pockets, the same theory is going to apply here, except our chest is going to be supported. So we're gonna take away as much momentum as we possibly can. And all you're going to do is reach down one at a time, grab each dumbbell, puff up our chest, focus on driving the elbows back, activating the lats, activating the rhomboids, activating the rear delts. There's minimal trap involvement here, just like on the first exercise, because we were pulling with the elbows and we're pulling to a lower point on our body. Now this is a great variation, especially if you were trying to target the lats. You'll notice this is an absolute killer. You're not going to be able to go as heavy again as like the power row we saw before or anything like that. So you're going to have to focus on the squeeze during this exercise, but it's definitely a great variation to have in your routine. Exercise number five is the dumbbell shrug. Now the traps are going to play a super important part in your overall back development. As you can see in this video while I'm doing my shrugs, I'll highlight the traps so you can see which area I am talking about. But obviously this takes up a large part of your back, so you wanna make sure you do not neglect them. Now you're going to hit your traps throughout your week doing your heavier pulls, like your deadlifts, your rack pulls, any other rowing movements you do during the week. You're going to end up hitting your traps just by putting weight on top of them and elevating your traps. But it's, sometimes it's nice if you feel like you're lacking that upper back development to make sure that you're going to isolate them with a shrugging movement. And a lot of people consider the traps to be part of the shoulders, but it is actually part of the back as you can clearly see in this video. So I do train them on my back day like many of you should. Now, this is sim super simple, guys. You can just set it up, stand up, do some shrugs. Make sure you're not turtling too much with your head so your head doesn't want to be going in and out. You want to keep it as stationary as possible as you fatigue that it's going to get much and much harder to do. You want to fight that as much as possible. Make sure your arms 
arms are almost fully locked out. One way you can do this is by flexing your tricep, but just basically make sure your arms are dead weight and you're squeezing as hard as you can in your hands so your grip isn't fatigued too quick. Now you can do this exercise standing, seated, machine. You can hold random objects at your house to have a certain amount of weight. You can hold it in the front, you can hold it in the side, you can hold it a little bit behind you. There are a million different ways that you can do shrug variations, and it is a great way to help with your overall back development. So in order to maximize the effectiveness of these workouts, of these exercises, what we are going to do is choose about two to four of these in our workout. We're going to do about two to four sets of each one that we chose. We are going to make sure we stay in the eight to 12 bodybuilding rep range. Now you can vary this a little bit, go as low as six, maybe go as high as 15, but keep it within that range in order to build the most amount of muscle. And you wanna make sure you do this about two times per week. One is okay, two is okay, Three sometimes for some people can be okay, but two is that magic number we wanna stick with. And we wanna make sure we do these after our compound movements. That way we're not frying our body for our heavier lifts. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this top five video. If you are not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new that you can incorporate into your routine. Leave a comment down below of your favorite exercise or maybe one that I forgot to mention in this video. So I hope you guys stay tuned for the next top five video that's coming out. Every Wednesday, you can always expect that. You can expect a video from Mike tomorrow on Thursday. So I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.